Hello everyone. Welcome to MBBS classes. Myself, Dr. Hanifa. Today in this video, I'll be talking on acute sinusitis. So before we start, let's see about some of the terminologies. Sinusitis is used for any inflammation or infection of the sinuses. But nowadays, the term sinusitis is replaced by the term rhinosinusitis. Rhinosinusitis, because in most of the cases where there is an inflammation of the sinuses, the nose is also involved. So, rhinosinusitis is the inflammation or infection of both the nose and the sinuses. If we look into the definition proper of the rhinosinusitis, it is a group of disorders which is characterized by symptomatic inflammation of the mucosa of the paranasal sinuses. The classification of rhinosinusitis can be based on the time frame. That means the temporal time frame from the onset of the symptoms based on the duration of the symptoms. And the other way of classification of the rhinosinusitis is based on the symptomatology. Based on the symptomatology, the disease is classified into major symptoms and minor symptoms. Now let's see the classification of the rhinosinusitis based on the time frame. So, it is classified into mainly four groups. The first is acute rhinosinusitis, recurrent acute rhinosinusitis. There is another subgroup called subacute rhinosinusitis and the last is the chronic rhinosinusitis. Let's see the difference between these four. The disease is labeled as acute rhinosinusitis when the inflammation or infection of the nose and the paranasal sinuses is sudden in onset and the duration of the symptom is less than 4 weeks. It is called recurrent acute rhinosinusitis when the patient suffers from 4 or more attacks of acute rhinosinusitis in one year and each episode it lasts for 7 to 10 days. The third subcategory is the subacute rhinosinusitis where the duration of the symptoms may range from 4 to 12 weeks. A disease where the symptoms last for more than 12 consecutive weeks, it is labeled as chronic rhinosinusitis. The classification of rhinosinusitis based on the symptoms, they are major symptoms and minor symptoms. Among the major symptoms are a symptom of facial pain or facial pressure, a sensation of facial congestion, fullness, nasal blockage, purulent nasal discharge or posterior purulent discharge that is the post nasal drip, hyposmia, anosmia that means the disorders of the olfaction and when the purulence is identified on the nasal examination and fever is a major symptom only in cases of acute rhinosinusitis. Among the minor symptoms are the symptoms like headache, fever, in non-acute rhinosinusitis, halitosis, fatigue, dental pain, cough, and associated ear symptoms like earache and ear fullness. So, acute rhinosinusitis, in this video, I will be talking only on the acute rhinosinusitis. Acute rhinosinusitis, it denotes the symptoms when they are sudden in onset and the duration is less than 4 weeks. If you look into the etiology, the cause is always, almost always infectious. The most common, the predisposing uh, in infection is in most of the cases is viral. It can be due to bacterial and bacterial infection is or in majority. It is always secondary to the viral infection and it could be in fungal etiology. The fungal etiology we are not discussing in this video because it is discussed in details in video on the fungal rhinosinusitis. You can go through this. Majority of the cases of acute rhinosinusitis, they are self-limiting because it is caused by the viral infection and the bacterial infections, they occur secondary to the viral infections. Now, what is acute bacterial rhinosinusitis or in short form, it is called as ABRS. How it is different from acute rhinosinusitis? So, Definitely the etiology when it is bacterial, we label it as acute bacterial. But how it is labeled as acute bacterial? 
so acute rhinosinusitis is is suspected as acute bacterial rhinosinusitis after at least a patient is having 7 to 10 days of symptoms or if the symptoms worsen after 5 to 7 days of onset so in the beginning if a patient is coming to you with the symptoms within a period of say about 7 to 10 days then it is considered as of viral etiology and it is considered to be bacterial only when the symptoms persist for this mentioned period of days if we look into the microbiology of the acute bacterial rhinosinusitis the most common bacteria is, which is responsible in adult is the streptococcus pneumonia in children the microbiology it is little bit different these are due to haemophilus influenza and morexilla catharalis and now the staphylococcus aureus mainly the methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus is a big concern nowadays so we know that the acute rhinosinusitis is the inflammation or infection of the paranasal sinuses and the nose but there are certain predisposing factors let's see one by one the most important predisposing factor is the viral upper respiratory tract infection allergy is also suggested but still the, it is not proven but uh, it is considered to play a role in the development of acute rhinosinusitis next is the anatomical deformities like septal deformity immune deficiencies and the role of environmental factors if we look into the pathogenesis of the acute rhinosinusitis remember that the pathophysiology of the acute rhinosinusitis it is an interplay between the predisposing factors like viral upper respiratory tract infection it could be allergy or any anatomical variations and the other being the infection and the inflammation in the sinonasal mucosa so if due to any reason there is an inflammation of the paranasal sinuses it will lead to infection of the paranasal sinuses and it is seen that if there is infection of the paranasal sinuses it will cause inflammation of the mucosa of the sinuses so basically they are interlinked with each other to understand the pathogenesis of acute bacterial rhinosinusitis we must know how the individual predisposing factors they causes the symptoms the most important being the viral upper respiratory tract infection so after a attack of viral upper respiratory tract infection there is seen that there, there occurs the mucosal swelling of the nose and the paranasal sinuses because of this there is a obstruction of the sinus ostium when there is obstruction of the sinus ostium definitely the drainage pathway when it is blocked it is seen that or it predisposes to acute bacterial rhinosinusitis in two ways first of all there is a transudation of the fluid in the sinuses and another way when the sinus ostium gets blocked there is a re reduced oxygen inside the sinuses and as a result of which there, it is seen that there is a reduction in the mucociliary clearance because of these mucosal thickening then when there is a stasis of the fluid in, inside the sinus moreover on the top of that the fluid is not able to get cleared because of the defect in the mucociliary clearance and it promotes bacterial infection the other way by which the viral upper respiratory tract infection can promote bacterial infection is that it is seen that after the viral infection the mucus becomes more viscous thick as a result of the change in the consistency of the mucus there is again reduced mucociliary transport which leads to obstructive sinuses and it leads to the predisposes to the development of secondary bacterial infection the role of allergy in acute bacterial rhinosinusitis it is suggested but it is not proven till now it is seen that uh, if there is any allergic reaction there will be antigen antibody reaction this leads to the release of inflammatory mediators and as a result of the these inflammatory mediators there is a change in the permeability of the vasculature there is the destabilization of the lysosomal membrane so all this results in the inflammatory changes which ultimately causes osteal blockage and because of the ostium blockage it predisposes to the development of acute bacterial rhinosinusitis 
Now, how to diagnose acute rhinosinusitis? The most important is the history taking of a patient, the, the type of symptoms, whether the symptoms are major or minor and the duration, it matters. Next is after a proper history taking, the next, next examination which helps to diagnose is the nasal endoscopic examination. It is done to assess the middle meatus and especially the spinoethmoidal rhesus. Moreover, in cases of severe disease, when there is a purulent discharge, if it can be seen, then this purulent discharge is taken for the culture and sensitivity testing. Radio imaging modalities, they also help in the uh, diagnosis and in this case, the CT scan of the paranasal sinuses is preferred. But the most crucial job is for the clinician to differentiate the acute bacterial rhinosinusitis from the viral rhinosinusitis. Again, to remember, we, viral rhinosinusitis is suspected when the symptoms they last for less than 10 days and ABRS is considered when the symptoms last more than 10 days or they worsen after initial improvement of 5 to 7 days. There is a guide, guideline by the clinical practice guidelines for the acute rhinosinusitis. Under this diagnostic criteria guidelines, it includes that if a patient is having up to four weeks of purulent nasal discharge, which is accompanied by the other symptoms like nasal obstruction, facial pain, facial pressure, fullness or both, then it is suggestive of acute rhinosinusitis. Moreover, this purulent nasal discharge may either be reported by the patient or it, it may be observed on physical examination. Likewise, regarding the nasal obstruction, according to the guidelines, it is seen that it may be reported by the patient or it may be observed on physical examination. So, this is an x-ray of the paranasal sinus, occipital mental view. You can see that this is the right maxillary sinus, this is the left maxillary sinus. You can see that there is an air fluid level. This air fluid level is the hallmark for the acute sinusitis. And you can see here there is a mucosal thickening. It is not as a straight line. So we, there is a thickening of the mucosa of the left maxillary sinus. The radiological investigations like CT scan of the PNS, they help in the diagnosis. So the characteristic features of this in CT scan is the air fluid level, which is a hallmark of the acute sinus sinusitis. If you see that this is a coronal section of the CT scan, this is the right maxillary sinus. You can see that there is a fluid level here, which is you can see it has been shown with this arrow. And on the left hand side also, there is a mucosal thickening. There is a possibility of uh, some air fluid level also and there is a mucosal thickening of the ethmoidal sinuses on both the sides and if you notice that the bony outlines are all normal so the findings with CT findings suggestive of acute sinus sinusitis are remember the first and most important is the air fluid level there could be the complete sinus opacifications or thickened localized mucosa and the other non-specific CT findings which goes in favor of acute sinus sinusitis are thickened turbinates and diffusely thickened sinus mucosa. Now let's come into the treatment of the acute rhinus sinusitis. The goal of the treatment is the first and important is to minimize the symptoms, to reduce the inflammation, eradicate the pathogens in acute bacterial rhinus sinusitis. To facilitate the sinus drainage because it is ultimately uh, it is happening after the sinus ostium blockage and determine the severity of the symptoms to because based on the severity of the symptoms only the treatment is planned now let's see the recommended therapy in acute rhinus sinusitis based on the severity According to the severity, the patients are divided into three groups, mild, moderate and severe. For the mild acute rhinus sinusitis, the treatment guidelines suggest the patient must be given symptomatic treatment only and a watchful waiting. Under the symptomatic treatment, it includes 
prescribing the analgesics, antipyretics, decongestants, nasal irrigation to clean the nasal uh, secretions inside the nose and last is the steam inhalation. If a patient falls into the category of moderate acute rhinosinusitis, the treatment is the symptomatic treatment as prescribed for the mild ARS group. Then if the symptoms persist for five days, then add intranasal steroids. Consider adding the antibiotic after five to 14 days. And if the patient are not getting okay after 14 days, then reconsider your diagnosis and do a repeat nasal endoscopy. In a case of severe acute rhinosinusitis, the pre-recommended therapy is using intranasal steroid, antibiotics, Oral corticosteroids are prescribed to reduce the pain in the severe disease and remember if there is no improvement in 48 hours, consider your diagnosis, consider nasal endoscopy, plan for the radiological investigations like CT scan. And sometimes in very severe cases, sometimes we need to give intravenous antibiotics also. And if a patient is having comorbid allergic rhinitis, then you can add oral antihistaminic also. With this, I come to an end of this video. Thank you for watching the video.